Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland. In this episode, we'll be mounting my P1X Profile Cockpit to ProSimU's P5 MP motion platform. Using their custom mounting brackets and hardware that comes with the P5 MP platform when you order one. Mounting a heavier and stiffer cockpit to this system should enhance the overall driving performance. Time to put it through the SRG's review process and see if it does. So, let's get to it. Now we can take a look at the hardware or brackets that we're going to be using to mount our P1X to the P5MP platform from ProSimU. Now they provide these brackets. There is a longer and a shorter version. And I'm going to show you the shorter version for the close-ups and you can see how these are made. Again, just like the rest of the platform, it's the same material. This is... I can remember how thick this was. Yeah, this is like 2.15 millimeters thick right in here. In fact, I'll give you guys a shot so you know I'm not lying to you. There we go. Well, that's 2.8 there. Let's see. There we go. 2.11, 2.12. Okay. So, again, this is the exact same tubing, metal tubing that they're using for the whole platform. And, of course, they have some very nice welds on their flanges that they attach to these tubings. You can see the welds done there. Yeah, very heavy-duty looking stuff. We have a flange sticking out here, obviously, with some slots in it so that we can attach it to the side of the P5MP platform. And these slots will accommodate an M8. That's what this is, M8 socket head cap bolt. And it just goes right in there like that. And, of course, you can see we've got some leeway here as far as moving it sideways so i like the fact that we're not isolate or limited rather to a really small area we can move that pretty pretty far it looks like a couple of inches maybe 50 mil or so and of course we have a very long slot on the top which will give us the lateral adjustment for our cockpit and of course this will also fit in there and as a bonus because we're mounting a profile cockpit i can use these corner brackets that have the tabs in them the anti-twist tabs and they'll fit right in just like that. So the nice anti-twist tab on that. So I like that they, they did it wide enough to accommodate that. Very cool. And yeah, not much else to see here. Now this one is, I believe it was 168 millimeters when I measured it out. Let's take my millimeter tape, me tape measure here, here. Yeah, it's 168 for these. And the long ones over here are 350 mil. So yeah. Definitely pretty long if you need to go, you know, if you've got something really wide you're putting on the platform or if you have something long uh, as far as sticking out the back. So, yeah, they have these extra long ones that you can use here. I'm not going to be using these because I, I really don't need it, but did want to show you guys the two different sizes that are available. And, of course, construction is identical to what we just saw on the 168 millimeter piece. Yeah, same stuff. So... Pretty solid. I, I really don't have any concern with this bending, especially with a, a P1X, even with it loaded up with all the goodies that I'm going to be putting on it. Right. Anything else we want to talk about? Now, they do give you some hardware with these kits, and that is an M8 volt here, the socket head cap that I showed you before, and I believe these are 25 mil. Let's see how long these bippies are. They're pretty long, so I guess if you have a, a, a big flange to go through, they want to make sure you have plenty of room to do that, so... I'm going to try to show you guys how long this is. I'm thinking 25. Yeah, well, 28. Okay, that might be more like a 30. You know, it's funny how all these bolt lengths go. Sometimes they mic out just a little bit longer or shorter. So that's 28.62, so they probably call this a 30. And we have these very thick washers that are going to go on top of that bolt. And very strong washers, which is something that which you want. Three and a half mil, over three and a half mil for these washers. So... Good thick hardware, and of course, if you saw the build video when I did the did that video from when I was actually building this ProSimU with the T1000 cockpit, you would have seen these two, and these are those T nuts, ProSimU's T nuts, very thick metal, and they just mic out at over six mil, six point two mil. So very thick hardware that they include with the kit. I do like that because obviously, depending on the, what you're going to be mounting to. That P5MP platform, yeah. We want to make sure we have some good hardware to do that. Now, here's the idea. I'm going to give you a quick mock-up of what I want to do here. And obviously, I'm going to be putting the P1X on, and it's going to be some 
the very big profiles, not this. This is just an example. And they're, they're going to be 160s. This is only a 4080. So it's going to be sitting something like this. All right. So easy enough to see how that's going to work. And then I'll come in with my corner bracket and grab it that way. Pretty simple. And of course, that gives me lots of leeway for sliding it back and forth for weight distribution, which is also a concern on all motion systems. Where do you want the weight distribution to be? Of course, you want to count at the center of gravity to be as center to the motion platform part as possible. So we can, that allows us to move it back and forth and not have a problem with that. Now, once we get over there, I'm going to show you a couple other things that you can actually use for this. I'm actually going to be able to use existing bolt holes with M8 bolts to grab some more of these M8s internal to the chassis itself. So once I have the chassis on there, I'll be able to come in with some bolts that are already on there and put another corner bracket on the internal part of the chassis. All right? But we'll see that as we go along. And yeah, I suppose that's all we need to see as far as the hardware. Now let's get over to the P5MP platform. Now I've already removed the T1000 cockpit that you saw in the build and setup review for the ProSimU motion system that I did before. So that's all gone. Now I have a flat surface to work with. So we'll go over there. I'll, I'll go ahead and put a couple of these on and see how that looks. So first step is to get the brackets mounted. And this gives me a better idea of where I'm at as far as the next step to get everything mounted properly. And of course, we want everything to be level as possible. And I'm going to be trying to center the P1X cockpit onto this platform. Of course, the more center you are as far as the center of gravity on their weight, transfer or distribution, the better off we're going to be as far as for the actuators to be able to do what they need to do. Now I'm going to get a little, let's get down here and look at these brackets. Now you can see that we have two bolts on each side. Those are M8s that we saw before with the thick washers. And this one is already tightened down, I think. Now oh, there we go. I wanted to make this loose so you guys can see what's going on here. And we'll see a little bit more of that once I get a piece of profile on it. But this bracket can obviously slide either way, right? So we can slide it back or forth depending on what our needs are. And it also can go just up just a little bit. Let me get close here. See how it raises up? Now when I raise it up like that, I can tighten it down. And at that level, it is even, exactly even with this square tube that spans the whole rig, right? So the problem is, this plate sitting on top is two and a half millimeters thick. So even with this being bound, uh, level with this frame here, if I want to keep this top one, I've got to do something about that two and a half millimeter gap. And I'll show you another shot of that soon. And also these bolts here, these are all M8 bolts holding these covers on. Now you could just take the covers off. Essentially they do have some minor structural integrity additions to this frame. But really, a two and a half millimeter uh, aluminum plate, this spread out on the frames. And I'll show you the frames here. See how well we can see them underneath there. Well, let's see again. There we go. So the frames are spread out, so they're not solid all the way across. I guess that's what I really want to show you guys. So this is really just keeping things from falling down through that frame. I mean, there is some structural integrity addition, but not a whole lot, I don't imagine. But you can also use these bolts. And I was talking about that in a closer look, if you remembered. I can actually take a bracket here and put it right there. But of course, I would be bolting it down with that bolt and then capturing the crossing piece of profile to also add another attachment point. Really, with just four attachment points around here, 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 and of course, over there on the other two sides, I don't think really it'd be an issue anyway, but if I can utilize something that's just sitting there and, you know, put a few more corner brackets in, I'm probably going to do it. We'll have to wait and see how that works because I might have to adjust the spreaders or those 500 millimeter pieces of 4160 profile that are in the P1X a little bit closer or further away to be able to match where those bolts are. But we'll just have to wait and see. But all this is adjustable. We can slide it around a little bit, so it should be okay. And we also have, I was just looking at this, we also have a extra hole here. See that bracket there? There's an extra hole there in the middle that just might be right in line with the profile, the long pieces of the side profiles that are going to be spanning the longitudinal direction on this frame. And we could probably put a 
corner bracket right in there. We'd have to move one of these bolts over though to give it room, but we might be able to make that work. But anyway, just thinking out loud here. So what we'll do next is go ahead and mock up some stuff and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about on this gap here and how I am going to solve that. Now, I also wanted to show you guys that there are mounting points on the back of this P5 MP frame so that you can put these brackets either on the sides or the back. And I'll use this long piece here to show you if you needed like an extension off the back here. And you can see the P1's already mounted when I'm shooting this. Obviously, we do the same thing that we've done with the other brackets. We just put them on the holes there. And of course, we have two sets of holes on either side. And of course, you also have them off the front. So this, again, just allows you the flexibility to either mount something that's longer or even something that might be wider than my P1X that I'm mounting on this unit right now. So just wanted to show you guys that in addition to the other mounting stuff. So we have, again, the brackets all installed, but I wanted to do a mock-up here to show you guys what I was talking about before about these plates being 2.5 millimeters higher than the actual tube frame here that this bracket will actually match the height of that tube frame. And currently, it is up there, I believe. Let me see if I can raise this any more than it. Okay, there we go. Now I'll go ahead and snug that up a little bit so it won't drop. Like that. So, I'm going to show you another angle here. There's still a gap under there, you can see, right? And I measured that out to be 2.5 millimeters, which is the difference between the top of our frame here and this two and a half millimeter plate. So I've got some spacer material that I'm going to use here. And I'm just going to, I really don't need this much. This spacer material is actually more like 2.75 millimeters. It's just a little bit, well, I don't know. It'll fit under there. Okay. It'll just squeeze under there where I need it to be. So I know I can use this to keep everything elevated high enough to keep everything in line. I want the load to be bearing on the top of this frame on both sides and the plates of course as it sits here like this and i also want it to be this wing to be loaded up too with the longitudinal pieces i'm going to mock that up by putting this on here and i really don't need this under here because it's such, it's such a small spread here i really don't need this all the way under there but i do need it under this piece so i would put it like this and again this is just a mock-up and it'll sit there like that so now both of these profiles are sitting level with each other. And we're going to have some load bearing on this bracket like it's supposed to be. And of course, I'll come in with a corner bracket like that and bolt this piece down from the side. In this piece, I'm thinking about, like I said before, using one of these bolts in a corner bracket to get the inside of that. But again, I'm going to have to wait to see how this looks once I put it together. So yeah, that's all we have to do. So once we have, once we filled our gap, then this cockpit is going to be very happy sitting on top of this platform. <laughs> All right. So what we'll do next, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the cockpit, the basic frame here, the four pieces of uh, this 4160, the two cross members, and of course the longitudinal pieces. And when we come back, that'll all be sitting up here and I'll have the corner brackets installed. And we'll take a look at how that, how that ended up as far as the only thing I'm concerned about is how far I'm going to have to move these center spreader pieces back or forth to get it close enough to engage one of these bolts on a corner bracket so I can have it inside. All right. So we'll take a look at that when we get back. So here is the P1X base chassis, the 40 by 160 profiles. And yeah, I built the box out just like you normally would when building a P1X. And we were able to get everything nice and level. You can see with those spacers that I discussed earlier, the frame is actually nice and level there. So that's good. And of course, we're securely attached to these wing brackets, if you will. And everything is looking good there. And I did have to move this centerpiece back 15 millimeters, which is really not going to make a big difference or any difference probably in, in use. And as far as mounting the seat mounts on this P1X frame. And you see, I did use those bolts. You see the one of them still sitting there. They're holding the plate that I talked about on the last segment. Just for just to do it, I don't really think it's necessary, but I just wanted to do it because they were there and it was easy enough just to undo those bolts and put a bracket on them. And yeah, why not? And it feels very secure. 
I don't have any any problems thinking it's going to come loose and I'll come over to this side and show you how that looks on these brackets. Whoops. So yeah, looking good there. And the front is even with the front of the P5 MP frame. And that's good because my cart tends to get close to these things when I'm using them. And it, obviously this is not moving forward so I can get pretty close to it. And yeah, everything's looking good. It's, it's working well. And so yeah, all that's left to do now is for me to go ahead and build out this P1X. And I've done that on a, on a review before, so you guys don't need to see this. And when we come back, I'll have the seat and the wheelbase and the pedal trays and pedals attached to it. Yeah, and then take a look at it. And then we can actually run it and see how the performance is affected, if any, on these PRS200 actuators. But I got a feeling it's not gonna affect them at all because the stats on these PRS200 actuators is up to 193 kilograms they maintain their 280 millimeter second speed and yeah obviously we're still going to have 150 millimeters of travel so when we come back we'll have it all set up and take a look at it and then we'll take we'll take it driving and see how it does so here is my testing configuration for the p1x chassis we've mounted and i just want to give you guys a quick look at that i'm using my sparco seat the evo 2 we're using the Husingville handbrake coupled with the excellent and beautiful SimWorks sequential shifter. There's our emergency kill switch. And we're running a set of pedals here on the excellent JCL pedal tray that runs on these linear rails and has those quick release locks. I really like this for, it makes it so easy to adjust when other people come over for the, the reach of the pedals. And we have some seat sliders under here for the Sparco seat. And we're running a turn wheel sitting on an Asher Racing button plate, the older configuration of his button plates, which are still my personal favorite ones. <laughs> and we're running the always awesome SS2 with the Cole Morgan 54G Bodner wheel system. So yeah, that's the setup we're gonna be running here. And now all we have to do is get in this bad boy and see how it does. So here we are in iRacing in the Ferrari 488 GT3, and of course we're at Sebring. Now I did test this track in the same configuration. Nothing changed from when I had the T1000 on here. In fact, I tested the T1000 uh, some laps just to get familiar with it again, to make sure that I was, knew all the bumps and how they felt. And then before I took the T1000 off and then put the P1X and built that up. And then got back in the exact same car, same setup this to try to do as, as best I can. Of course, that's not scientific, but the best I can from feel to see what the differences are, if any, in the performance of the system. Now, as you might imagine with the heavier weight on here, and of course the P1X is a much more solid or, or stiff chassis than the T1000 is, and especially in the wheelbase mounts and things like that. It's just a more substantial cockpit in general, which adds a substantial bit of weight to the package also. And of course I'm running the sequential shifter and handbrake combo up there so I can do some dirt stuff that we'll see in a minute. But yeah, uh, no difference at all. No performance degradation was noticed at all. It, it just didn't mean break a sweat. And I, you know, I was kind of confident that it wasn't going to because the, the manufacturer actually states that 193 kilograms up to that weight limit per actuator, the performance parameters don't change. You're still getting 280 millimeters per second of travel and acceleration of two G's. So that just, just does not diminish at all. And I could pretty much confidently say that, yeah, <laughs> there is no difference at all at the exact same settings in SIM tools for the system. Now there was obviously, like I said before, some nuances that were different because I'm sitting in a much stiffer frame now, which really just made the experience that much better for me personally. <laughs> so yeah, uh, the P1X is definitely a success here, especially doing the circuit cars in any oval racing or anything like that yeah no difference now also i want to test it over here in the dirt tracks and we're on one of the lucas oil dirt truck tracks the racing tracks with a lot of jumps in them but i'm actually in the ford um, the ford fiesta here because i just want to play around with the, the sliding around the turns and things like that and just push again the system as hard as i could and see how it reacted with the additional weight and also the additional stiffness of the cockpit and again Overall, the, the performance was the same. I really didn't notice much, but I could feel more because obviously, again, I'm in this P1X 
chassis, which is much stiffer than the, uh, the T1000 chassis that, that is available through ProSimU. And of course, everybody just looking at that would know that. And if you go back and look at the ProSimU review, um, you can see where you know, there was a little bit of flex, a bit of flex rather, in the, uh, the wheel base mount, even though they have a stronger one available. But yeah, it, obviously it's still not gonna be like the P1X. This thing is just rock solid. And again, the overall experience to me personally, I'm enjoying it even that much more with a P1X mounted to it. And the cool thing here is you can mount whatever you want to. It doesn't have to be a P1X. Just about any cockpit that you could come up with, I would imagine. They even have a picture, I'll show you here, of that Ferrari sitting on the, the P5 MP platform on their website. So just about anything with all the brackets and things available, you can mount here. So yeah, this is definitely a step up in the overall satisfaction I'm getting out of this platform with my P1 actually mounted here. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the ProSimU P5 MP cockpit mounting system. You know, when I did my original review of ProSimU's P5 MP platform with their very own T1000 cockpit mounted, I was thinking the whole time of a way I could get a P1X cockpit mounted to it. <laughs> I imagined that it would only enhance the driving experience that you get with a P5 MP system. When I asked ProSimU about me doing this, I was happy to find out that they had their own custom brackets or mounting system available. So, no custom bracket fabrication needed on my part here. Now, the welded all metal brackets had the same powder coated finish that the rest of the P5 MP platform has, which makes them an aesthetically pleasing addition to this system. They come with all the hardware bits that you will ever need to get a P1 cockpit properly mounted, or really any other cockpit I would imagine. Now, just for fun, I also used some of the P5 MP's mounting points it already had to add some additional corner brackets to my setup. Now, the P1X cockpit is a noticeably heavier cockpit setup than ProSimU's T1000, but it also brings a higher level of stiffness to the ride. Now, when driving the P5MP with my P1X attached, I could not detect any degradation in its performance, which was really not surprising considering that the PRS200 actuators are rated to maintain their 200 mm per second speed and 2 Gs of acceleration up to 193 kilograms per actuator. As you might imagine, I did notice a different driving experience with the P1X mounted, which only enhanced the already great driving experience you get when running this motion system. Now, when you purchase a P5 MP motion system from ProSimU, it will ship with four of the 168 millimeter brackets and two of the 350 millimeter brackets. So this will make it very easy to get whatever cockpit that you might have mounted correctly. I'm Barry Rowland. Thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to help support what I do here at the SRG, visit my website at simracinggarage.com.